What's up guys, in this video you will learn how to manage all of your passwords and even one-time passwords on Linux and without having to trust any third-party service. This will be done by using the standard Unix password manager. You will also learn how to access all of your passwords in an easy manner with the help of a simple hotkey. And I'm also going to show you how you can synchronize your passwords between multiple devices in a secure manner. By the way, all of the resources for this video can be found inside this GitHub repository or in more detail on my blog posts. Both of those links are down in the description below. We will get started by installing some dependencies. So copy the command for your operating system and paste it in your terminal. In my case, I'm on Fedora and I will just install those six dependencies. In my case, they have already been installed on my system. Before we can actually initialize the password store, we need a GPG key pair. Because pass uses GPG to encrypt and decrypt your files. You can list your GPG keys by running GPG list keys. And in my case, I already have one key here. But if you don't, you can use GPG full gen key to generate a new key. But be sure to back up this key securely, because if you lose access to your GPG key, you will also lose access to all of your passwords. To do that, you can run this backup command, and then you have to store this private.gpg file securely. Now we can go ahead and initialize the password store. To do that, we have to run pass init, and then paste our GPG fingerprint. This will create a folder inside your home directory called .passwordstore. And this folder will contain all of your passwords. We can also use pass in combination with a git repository to track all the changes that have been made to our passwords. Although this is completely optional, I would highly recommend you do that. Because then you are able to access old or remove passwords. And this will also make it possible to synchronize your passwords between multiple devices. So go ahead and run pass git init. Now we can start to add some passwords. To add an existing password, you can run pass insert and then specify the name of the password. For example, github.com. Now you have to enter it twice to confirm it. And as you can see here, pass has automatically created a new git commit for the newly inserted password. And that's because we have previously initialized the git repository for the password store. You also have the option to generate new passwords. To do that, you just have to run pass generate and then specify the name, for example, google.com. At this point, you might want to know how to access your passwords. And this is really simple. You just have to run pass and then the name of the password. So if I run pass google.com, it will print the generated password for me. But I think it's more useful to use the C flag to copy the password to your clipboard. Now we have 45 seconds to paste your password somewhere. You can also list all of your passwords by just running pass. And for example, if you want to edit a password, you just have to run pass edit and then the name of the password. And as soon as you save this file, the password will be changed and a new git commit will be created. You also have the option to rename a password by running pass move. And for example, if you would like to rename github.com to github.com2 or something, we can do that easily by just running pass move. Likewise, there are the pass copy and the pass remove commands for duplicating and deleting passwords. And what's great is that pass will automatically encrypt all of your passwords at rest. Meaning that for each password, there is a single file in the password store directory but the content of the file is encrypted. So if we try to print the content, we just get some garbage and not the plain text password. With the help of the pass OTP extension, it's also possible to manage one-time passwords. And I will quickly run you through an example of adding such a one-time password to your password store. Most likely you will get a QR code like this one here, but we are actually interested in the secret key, which is decoded in this QR code. And to decode the QR code, you have to make a screenshot. After that, you can use the previously installed CBAR tool to decode the QR code. So just run CBAR image and then pass the file path to the screenshot. And it will return this URL, which might vary a little bit. But most importantly, here is the secret key, which we are interested in. 
Now we can add the one time password and this can be done by running path otp add and then the name in my case otp slash github.com. Here we have to enter the otp of url. So copy the url but be sure to omit this first part here. Paste it in there and you have to confirm it twice. And now we have added the one time password. To get the six digit code, we have to run pass otp and then the name, in my case, otp github.com. And again, you can also use the C flag to copy it to your clipboard and then you can paste it inside your app. And that's basically everything you need to know about managing your passwords and one time passwords. But I think it's quite annoying to always have to open a new terminal and type pass and then the name of the password to access them. And that is why we will now set up a quick menu to access all of your passwords with a simple hotkey. For that purpose, we have previously installed the Rofi package, which provides a simple UI menu. To load all of our passwords into this menu, we have to create a little script, which can be found inside the GitHub repository. So open this file and copy its content. And then we want to create a new script inside our binaries directory. So just run sudo nano and then user bin pass menu. Here you can paste the content of our script. And what this script does is simply to list all of the files inside our password store directory and then pass them to the Rofi menu. It will also conditionally run pass otp or just pass depending on the type of password that you have selected. So make sure to save that file. We also have to make the script executable by running this command. And now we can easily open our menu by just running pass menu. This will open the Rofi menu, which will display all of our passwords. We can also filter them by typing some characters. And if you press enter, you will have the password copied to your clipboard. In this case, this is the password for Google. And I can also copy a one-time password, which will provide me with the six digit code. Now we just have to add a hotkey to quickly access our passwords. In GNOME, this can be done by going to your keyboard settings and choosing view and customize shortcuts. Then you have to scroll all the way down to custom shortcuts and press the plus button. I will give it the name of pass menu and the command that will be executed will be pass menu. And as a shortcut for my passwords, I like to use control shift P. Then you can just click add. And if you now press your shortcut, the Rofi menu will be opened and you can quickly access your passwords. You might run into some problems when opening the Rofi menu. So if you are able to open it, but not able to type something, then probably the display manager Wayland is the problem. But no worries, this can be fixed easily by editing this file. So if you have this problem, then go ahead and open terminal and type sudo nano and then the name of this file. In this file, you have to make one simple change and this is here where it says Wayland enable false. You have to make sure that this is uncommented. Once that's done, you just have to press Ctrl X, type yes and click enter. Now you have to reboot your computer and after that, hopefully the Rofi menu will work. If you are using a laptop and after the reboot, your touchpad gestures do not work anymore, then you might have to install the X11 gestures extension and the touch egg app. In my case, that fixed all of my problems with the touchpad. Lastly, I want to show you how you can synchronize your passwords across multiple devices. And of course, the simplest way to do it is just to copy the password store directory onto the other devices. But I think that's quite laborious and there's definitely a better way to do it. Because we are already using a Git repository to manage our passwords, we can simply synchronize our passwords by using a Git remote repository. You could even use a public Git repository to do that, because as you remember, all of our passwords are encrypted. But there is still a catch, because all of the file names are still visible. Hence, if the repository was public, everyone would know which services you are using. And that's why I'd like to encrypt the entire Git repository such that the file names aren't visible either. And this can easily be achieved with the help of the Git remote gcrypt helper. So go ahead and use one of those commands here to install the helper. And after that's done, we can add an encrypted remote to our password store Git repository. To do that, I will start by creating a new GitHub repository as our remote. 
I will simply call it path tutorial and make it private and then create a repository. Now I'm going to copy the remote URL, which is this one here. And then we can add it by running pass git remote add. Then we have to specify the name of the remote. In my case, I will just call it origin. And we have to prefix the remote URL with gcrypt column column. And then you can paste the URL. We also need to tell gcrypt which GPG key should be used for encryption and decryption. And to do that, we have to run those two commands down here. So I will copy the first one and change the remote name to, in my case, origin. Then I have to copy the fingerprint of my GPG key and paste it at the end of this command. This first command will configure the participants, which could also be multiple GPG keys. But in my case, that's just one because I'm the only one which will have access to my passwords. And likewise, we also have to specify the signing key which in my case is also the same GPG fingerprint. And now you can easily upload your repository to the remote by running pass git push origin master. And this command will automatically encrypt all of your commits and push them to the GitHub remote in my case. If I now refresh, you can see that the file names of our passwords are now not visible anymore. And then on your second device, you can simply run git clone to download the repository. But again, you also have to prefix the remote URL with gcrypt column column. And this will download the repository and decrypt it. And of course, this will only work if you have access to your GPG key on your other device. Now you would simply have to move the downloaded repository to the home directory and rename it to dot password store. So let's try and see if the synchronization works. I will simply add a new password by running pass generate example.com. Then the new password has been generated and added to the password store directory. And now I simply push those changes by running pass git push origin master. This will update the GitHub remote. Here you can see that something has changed. And now I can go to my other device and run pass git pull origin master. But since I'm on the same device, I will omit the pass and run it in the repository that I've cloned previously. And this should download the newly added password, as you can see here. If you wanted to, you could also use pass on your phone by using the Android Password Store app on Android or the Pass for iOS app. But I'm personally not doing that because I'm not comfortable putting my GPG key on my smartphone. What I'm doing instead is that each time I have to use a password on my phone, I'm sending it from my computer to my phone with the help of Session. Session is a private and decentralized messenger and I'm just sending it as a disappearing message so I can quickly copy it on my phone and then the message will disappear. And as a quick side note, there are also some other clients. For example, there is a Firefox plugin and a Chrome extension to access your passwords from directly in your browser. And if you're migrating from another password manager, you could also use those utilities to migrate from the other service to Password Store. I promise you, once you have set up Password Store on all of your devices, you will never go back. And if you found this video helpful, then make sure to start the GitHub repository and you can also support me by sending some anonymous cryptocurrencies. You can also find all of my videos on my Rumble channel if you prefer to watch it there. With that said, thank you so much for watching and have a great time.